Okay, so in part one, we described the data, we described the study a little bit, we looked at the data, we summarized it into this nice table, and then we picked out a couple interesting points that will be helpful to us. We connected to the, those to some symbols. The symbols here are not terribly important. The understanding of how we got these figures is much more important okay because we're gonna as you're gonna see now we're gonna let Excel do most of the work through the data analysis tool pack so let's quickly review how to install the data analysis tool pack you will need to go to file options add-ins and then click go down here okay so I have a video showing you how to do this but it's easy enough click go then Make sure to check the analysis tool pack, not the one with VBA, just the regular one, and then click OK. All right, I have already done this, so I'm going to cancel this and go directly to the analysis tool pack. So click over onto the data ribbon. This works for earlier versions of Excel as well. Click on the data ribbon, and you'll see you get this new little choice over here called data analysis click on data analysis this is Excel's answer to statistical software this is its way of doing some higher statistics than what the functions necessarily allow you to do so what we want to do here is a two-way or sometimes called two-factor ANOVA so that's this right here and we have a choice of two here we want to do with replications because as we determined in the first video we do have replications. We have actually three replications per group, okay, or block. All right. So let's choose. Okay. <clears throat> and since we set up the data like this, with our first factor on the first row and our second factor on the first column, it's ready to be input into Excel. So this is actually what it starts with. So let's do this together. The input range, you're going to include this first row all the way down to the last, OK? Rows per sample, this is where you put the number of replications, the n prime, OK, from here. All right, so we have three. Here we set our alpha. Our level of significance is 0.05. Let's just stay with that. Okay. And finally, the output range, where you want Excel to throw all this output. Let's put it on the same sheet so we can talk about it. And look at the data simultaneously. Okay, So here we go. We get a whole bunch of output. First, the summary section, which includes a separate little kind of snippet from each level of factor A. So we got six levels of factor A, and this is the summary section. And then we have the main bit over here, the ANOVA output. Okay, And so we're going to look at this first. These are just the means from each group, the variances, the counts, and the sums. Some, just some summary descriptive statistics, which could be useful. All right. So first off, let me describe these these are the three main rows we're going to be looking at. Okay, sample, columns, and interaction. The samples row, you could go ahead and rename for yourself factor A. And if you even want to be more specific in our example, this is the material main effect. Okay. The columns row has to do with the factor that's on the column. So that was length. That's our factor B. So if you set up your table consistently the way I did above, meaning by table I mean this, then you'll be able to interpret this output much more systematically. So this is the length. Interaction is the interaction between factor A and factor B. Okay, So these three rows have the key to a lot of those hypotheses, those three hypothesis tests that we made in, at the end of part one the video I did okay so we can go directly to the p-values and cut right to the chase okay so first off what we're gonna do is answer that third hypothesis test 
interaction. So we go to the interaction row. Okay, and this is my recommendation to first look at the interaction. Remember that the hypothesis was that there is no interaction, the null, between material and length. And the alternative is that there is interaction. So please just allow me to be brief here and abbreviate this. Okay, there's many ways to write it more formally. And at a level of significance of 0 0.05 and a p-value, which we read right off the output, on the interaction row, we see the p-value here is 0.9975. Okay. Clearly, if you recall, the p-value is much, much, much greater than alpha. And when the p-value is greater than alpha, we do not reject. We fail to reject. So we fail to reject or if reject HO. Or if you're doing it less formally, some classes might have taught you that you accept HO. This is more technically correct. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis here. So we can pretty confidently conclude that there is no interaction between the material used, the scaffolding material, and the length. Okay, so there's no interaction between material and length here. All right. So now we can move on to the, analyze the main effects. So let's go to the main effects. First, factor A, material. Remember, the null hypothesis was that all the means of all the materials, the six materials, so let me just write one dot dot dot. We wrote this out all in the last video, in part one. All the means from mu1 to mu6 of the six materials are equal. The alternative is that at least one of them is different than the other, at least one inequality. At an alpha of 0 0.05, which is a typical level of significance, we go to that p-value. And this, if you're not used to this notation, this is just the scientific notation. This is saying 6.65 times 10 to the negative 20, which amounts to a decimal place followed by about 19 zeros before you get to the 665. Okay? Point is much, much smaller than alpha, which is 0.05. So we very, very confidently, or we should say with a lot of evidence, we reject HO. We reject the idea, the hypothesis, that the means are all the same for the material. In other words, that the, diff that the six different materials yield the same level of healing, same GPI level. Okay? There is very strong evidence against that. There's strong evidence that there is at least one difference among those materials with respect to the amount of healing that takes place, the GPI percentage. All right, so that's an interesting um, discovery. All right, and then we move on to the final factor, the final hypothesis test, the one for length, factor B. And remember, this was just that the two lengths yield the same. Um, GPI percentage, same level of healing, versus <clears throat> that there is at least one inequality among them, which means basically that the means are different. Because there's only two, so there's only one way that in at least one inequality is going to occur. Again, using a level of significance of 0 0.05, we go on to the factor B's row. And we go all the way to the right, and we see the p-value is pretty large. Okay, so with p-value of 0.59, we are not going to reject. We're going to fail to reject HO. 
So it seems like the length of time is not a factor. It's pretty strong. There's no evidence at all to suggest that the length of time that um, a scaffolding is used, regardless of the type of scaffold, has an effect on the um, GPI percentage, which was a measure of the healing. Okay. So the only thing we walked away with here quite interestingly is that the material used is a factor and it has very strong evidence for that there is no interaction between the material and the length and there's no main effect of length either okay but we had to do this study in order to learn this all right now in the third video I'm gonna attempt to show what we just did analytically with these numbers okay with a plot called the cell means plot okay and this is a very useful tool in a two-way analysis of variance both to see interaction and to have a visual kind of understanding a more intuitive understanding of all these numbers here and some of the conclusions that we just came to here alright so make sure to watch video three where we round out this discussion